I think a Chromebook is both specific and not that specific because anyone working from home or working on branches, using the internet to reach SS applications and using security solutions around that, like cloud proxies and CASB is just going to be affected by the same thing. So if you think you know of the whole journey from a user to the cloud, there are so many traps from performance standpoint that it's hard for someone to guess where problems actually come from. I'll show you live. When we think of experience, it's going to be driven by many factors. It's going to be driven by very local uh, networks like Wi-Fi and the LAN and which DNS you use and what is your ISP and what is the last mile, but then you've got things that sit really in the cloud like SBs and zero trust networks and VPNs and potentially SD1 as well if you see them branch somewhere. And then there is where you're getting redirected by a SaaS platform in the cloud. So the first thing we're going to show you is the digital experience and what drives it and how simply we can make this obvious. And the second will be, and that's part of the digital experience or that's for the digital experience is the hybrid connectivity. So what is the path that you take when you want to reach a certain service and how does it affect your experience? Okay. There are three sources of information that we use to, to show you data. The first one is user watch. It's a very lightweight instrumentation of your browsers. So basically you place an extension on your browser and you can deploy that industrially on all of your devices, Chromebooks or any device that has a browser. And the second one will be NetTracer, which will basically be deployed on Chromebooks specifically as an Android app. Here are the outcomes and the insights we can get from it. So I'm looking at three days of our own team performance and digital experience so we can see the different applications that are used, how many people actually connect to those applications, what is the connectivity. Uh, you can see that as a figure or you can see a trend and basically see how people might be affected by changing conditions when they want to reach a certain application. A good example of that would be SN, which is the task management SaaS application we use internally where you see latencies is changing. And then you see indicators of user experience. So either the time which is needed to load a new page or the time needed to make an API process, uh, an API call. So we call that API processing. And that can be broken down between the different fra infrastructure layers that are going to influence the response time that you're getting. So here you see, for example, in red, the waiting time, the network layers, DNS, and latency are going to be represented in yellow. Blue is going to represent uh, the server processing, so how long the SaaS server or the application server is taking to respond. And green is going to be uh, the time needed to transfer data back to you, which may be short, but maybe long in some cases. Google Docs is a good example. And then you will see the number of errors that might affect your users. The idea is that you, you get a basically a high-end view of that, which application stand not so close to the users, you know, which ones have experience problems, you know, which ones are affected by errors, had a glance, and then you can see your users on a map and see where are the users that have a trouble. So for example, when we look at page load times, it's obvious that the people in the Western part of France have a much worse experience than people sitting in Canada, for example, in Montreal. And then we can see people by either their location or the internet service provider they're using to connect to the different applications. And there are obvious things, for example, the people using a zero trust network like Netscope or a zero trust network don't get good latency. That has a direct impact on their experience and people using our inference will have a worse latency. Okay, so you can see that by country. If there are some people sitting on site and not working remote, you can see them as well. And you can see the breakdown of those users also by the kind of endpoints they're using. So you see, we've got a mix of Windows users, Mac users, Linux users, and of course, Chromebook users, which is the topic for today. All right, if you want to dive into that, nothing is simpler. You just click on application and you get to a little more details as to what are the trends from a response time standpoint, the number of users, when there are basically times that are response times that are getting bigger or error rates that are getting bigger and who is affected by that. We've got 21 people, for example, coming from the Microsoft Zero Trust Network and for them, latency is bad and that has a direct impact on their experience. While we see that all the technologies used like Zscaler would probably prove to be good. We can also pe see people on site. We can see that graphically and see where are the people going to when they use the Microsoft Zero Trust Network, for example. Uh, we simply filter on that and we see that they are going to the Candyscape platform and we can see a list of users that are impacted.
Okay. If we want to take another example, we could simply say, okay, I want to know who's impacted by this peak of response time. That would show me directly which applications are impacted by that. I would know that Google Calendar, for example, had tremendous transfer time, with a lot of errors. I could see that the people impacted are the people on site in Montreal. And I could tell you exactly what is the path that they're taking and why they had such bad impact and who was the user. And I could eventually tell you, okay, what application is that user accessing? Where is he connected from? Which application is he using? Where is he having trouble? I could tell you whether he's had a peak of latency, for example. So his, his DNS, for example, went really bad. He was always on site. I could tell you if he, if he liked RAM or CPU at some point, okay? And say that he's got a connectivity problem. The thing that uh, uh, probably he'll be willing to know is why he's having connectivity problems. And basically, that's something we can tell easily from Chromebooks. So we've got two groups of people using Chromebooks on our platform. Some are located in Canada, some are located in Belgium. We can see which part, which services they're trying to reach. We can see that, for example, they've got problems with the Microsoft media server, a lot of loss to the media server. So we can deep dive, go into the different fleets of Chromebooks. So some are belonging to our Montreal office. There are five of them. Some belong to the Belgium office. There's just one of them. We can see the latency and the loss they're getting. We can see where they're trying to get to, what are the services that they're getting, what sort of quality of signal they're getting on the Wi-Fi, how it affects the quality. If we want to look into, for example, one fleet in particular, we would go to Montreal and we would see basically all the Wi-Fi and connectivity services used by Montreal. And you could see, for example, that the people suffering from loss are connected through the Wi-Fi, which is called Casablanca on the frequency, which is 2.4 gigahertz. And we can focus on this one, for example, as an example, then see the devices, see which one have good signal, poor signal, which ones got affected. Then we can see basically how they connected, when they were connected, when they suffered from loss. And in the end, the goal is that we can get to the point where we see which path they're taking, how they reach the media server, and basically if there is packet loss, which is the case, we can see where it's happening. So if it's happening in the private network, on the Wi-Fi, on the last mile of the operator, or like in this case, on the Microsoft Azure network. It's all the different passes basically that you can take. So we're looking at seven days. So obviously when you go through a cloud network that are plenty of options from a pass point of view in a cloud network. So if I restrict the time, you're going to actually see exactly what pass this Chromebook was taking at a given point in time. And that will tell you exactly where loss is happening at a given point in time. So this is what's varying over. If you think you have a stable Wi-Fi at home, for example, and you paid for a premium one or at the office, something else is clearly going on beyond your Wi-Fi that's varying all the time, right? So this is what this is trying to tell you is you can find why your performance is different from one day to another when your configuration hasn't changed at all. So this is actually pretty cool. What we'll do in a second, we're going to look at that a bit more as it loads. It's a very complex network that we're analyzing here going into Ops Cloud Network. But what Boris will show you is where the loss can actually come from. And often its latency originates from something outside of the Chromebook's control. Correct, correct. It can be simply something that loss can happen any, at any point in time and any place on, on, on the network path. So it can belong to the Wi-Fi. It can belong to your last mile operator. If you're running on an SD-1, it can basically come from one underlay or another. And there are possibilities for you to, to, to work around that. In the same way, when you're affected by loss, for example, on a cloud service, if you know where it comes from, you can actually take action and get another DNS resolution to be redirected to another SAS node. And also, I guess if you're the network operations guy, this tells you very quickly that your network itself, what you're in control of is working very well, including like the Wi-Fi connectivity to the end user's Chromebook. But in this case, you have to have a conversation with Microsoft if that is where the loss is coming in, right? So it really saves you time because you understand right away where the responsibility lies, whether you should be working on the device, upgrading it to make sure it's behaving properly or the Wi-Fi or the ISP. Or... So this is a pretty good tool to understand, to have a good conversation, right? 
Correct. And you can manage multiple vendors in a way, your ISP, your cloud provider, your zero trust network provider as well. So...